Hey, this is Reverend Dr. Marisha, your Lioness Queen. Happy Saturday. Welcome to our weekly Man of Motivation. And so this week I wanted to talk about, um, we're still in the theme of healing is your responsibility. And so this week I wanted to talk about, you need to put the oxygen mask on you first. Amen. And so before we get started, you know, I love, I love starting every episode with a quote or a poem. And um, I'm so honored to do that. And so this week, um, I found a poem called Dare to Self-Care. And so it says, speak kindly to your inner self. Don't take your demon's view. You are you and no one else will lead the life you do. Kill your inner critic and silence all his chatter. Then write his truth inside your brain. I'm worth it. I matter. And that um, poem is by Miss Moen. I, I'm telling you, that was powerful, right? That was powerful. So it said, don't take on your demon's view and be mindful about you being that inner critic. I think we can really be, um, we're our worst critics, I tell you. Um, and the one thing that it made me think about is who are you listening to, right? I think they're always... Uh, in a nutshell, there are two voices that are going on in your head, right, all the time. And the question is, who are you listening to, right? Um, are you listening to the Holy Spirit that is trying to guide you to truth, to love, to joy, positivity, hope? Or are you listening to the enemy, right, that is trying to, although the enemy loves to use reason, loves to use logic, but in a nutshell, reason and logic lead to negativity, lead to doubt, lead to fear, lead to self-destruction. But he starts out very subtle, right? With, with reasoning and logic, but he leads you down a negative path. And so what chatter is going on? What chatter are you listening to? Or should I say, whose voice is the loudest right now in your mindset? So this week um, and this month on the Linus Queen podcast, I encourage you to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Um, this month, we've been talking about healing is your responsibility. And, um, and definitely, what does that mean? That means that you have a choice to heal, right? You have a choice on the inside of you. Um, but the question is, who are you listening to, right? And who you listen to will determine um, how you take care of yourself or the lack thereof. So I would say, so for many of us, many women, we, we don't put the oxygen mask on ourselves first. Um, we take care of other, others first, you know? And I found this article and it talked about how the main reason why we don't do that is because we are naturally, we're born nurturers. That's who we are. We are born to nurture, which is attached um, to making sacrifices for others. It's attached to being responsible for others, taking care of others, loving others and putting others first, right? Um, which is why God called us to be mothers because of that nurturing um, trait that he um, planted in in our being, in our DNA and who we are. We are the givers of life. We give life. And in that giving, there is a sacrifice to who we are. You know, definitely when we birth children, there is a sacrifice of our bodies. Um, you know, physically, there is a sacrifice of our bodies mentally and spiritually. Our bodies, you know, uh, we sacrifice a lot. It is, it is almost, um, it is just a fabric of who we are in a sense, but <clears throat> excuse me, being a mother, you know, can be a calling or a curse, you know? Um, and you may be thinking, well, why did you say that? But it is a blessing to bring a child in the world. Children are gifts from God, but God never intended for children. He never intended for us to be our child's God. 
And let me say that again. He never intended for us to be our child's God. He never intended for us to take his place in their lives. And when we do that, we curse the relationship with our children to the point where our children need, it's almost as if our children don't need God. All they need is mama. Mm -hmm. And so it is a, it is a space we can easily fall victim to because of our nurturing spirit. But when we allow our children to consume our lives, it's a curse. And what is that curse? The curse is you becoming so consumed with putting your children first, giving everything that they may need or want, and you neglect you. You neglect yourself. You put the oxygen mask on them first before you. And as a result, you cannot breathe. You neglect your goals, your needs, your desires, your health. You neglect your goals, your dreams. You neglect everything about you. You neglect, I mean, just absolutely everything. And so it's, it's, it's really sad. But it is, it is an innate quality that we have. But in the same regard, God wants us to, he wants us to be, I mean, he called us to be the vehicle to bring them here <laughs> into the world, right? But he didn't want us to be the vehicle, the chauffeur, and the navigation system all at the same time. It's not what he required for us to do. But we do too much. Say that to yourself. I, 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 I do too much. And it's so easy to do because we love those little people, right? But, but oftentimes we take on too much. And we try to become God to our children, not realizing it. And as a result, we give so much of ourselves that we, we have nothing to help us to breathe. And you need to put the oxygen mask on first. Say that to yourself. I need to put the oxygen mask on myself first. Now, many will say that putting the oxygen mask on themselves first is what? Selfish. Oh, that's selfish of you to do that. But when did taking care of self become selfish? When did me taking care of me become selfish? Because if there is no me, then who's going to take care of everything, right? So my question to you is what will selfish look like when you're not here? What will selfish look like if your ex finds your children, uh, if your ex finds another mother for your children because you're not here? What does selfish look like when you cannot provide for your children? Because your health has crippled you so much. And now your children have to take care of you. What will selfish look like when you try to give your children everything that they want to keep the peace, but you can't afford your rent or your mortgage? What will selfish look like when you never tell your children no? And then they go out and steal things because they can't handle the word no. And it's so interesting, me saying that I literally had a cousin who her, she never told her children no. And, um, and uh, when she started, the son really had a hard time with it. Had a hard time with it so much so that he started going out and stealing things and doing things. And financially, she just, she just couldn't do it. And as a result, um, you know, he started stealing things in the house and it started getting toxic. And unfortunately, and, and then she, the daughter, um, she started showing more favoritism to the daughter and the son didn't like that. And as a result, killed the sister and killed himself. And so you got to just think about how we raise our children, you know, um, so in a nutshell, what will selfish look like when you're gone? And I'm sorry to really be brutally honest, but sometimes we give too much of ourselves to others. You know, when Maslow's hierarchy is really enough. 
And if you don't know what that is, you can look it up. Maslow's hierarchy is the perfect foundation. It is the it is the perfect foundation of what children need. And so when did trying to give them everything become a standard? You know, when did you sacrificing all your money to please them become a good parenting skill? You know, when did trying to give them clothes every week become a new status quo? When you're lacking shoes and things that you need. Say it again. I need to put the oxygen mask on first. Now, maybe it's not your children. I was talking about children. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's your significant other. And they are sucking the life out of you right now. And you are so consumed because you're a gift giver, right? You're so consumed with meeting their needs that you are neglecting your own. And I've heard from many women in this regard, especially as it relates to, I know in certain cultures, you know, where the parents feel like, oh, you owe me. Right. For all the everything I sacrificed for you. Oh, you owe me. Well, really, honestly, you weren't asked to be here one. We weren't asked to be here. Right. (laughs) You didn't have any authority on things. Right. That they are right. That you didn't have like, hey, I need you to make me buy the make. I want you. I'm going to make you buy this for me. No. Parents decided to buy things for the children. Right. That, that that's two and and in a nutshell three it's it's their responsibility right to provide for us it, it's parents responsibility to do that and we, again we didn't ask to be here it was it was your decision for us to be here whether you decided it you planned it or not it was still your decision and so as a parent, is a responsibility to provide a sense of directional guidance, provide a sense of always uh, moving forward, just like the vehicle, right? You're providing a directional guidance. You're providing a way to always move forward, not backward, and provide a sense of security. That's what the vehicle does. But in the same regard, parents can't put a guilt trip, and but that's what they do, I know. They can't put a guilt trip on you just like children. But you have to breathe first before you can help anyone else breathe. Let me say that again. You got to breathe first before you can help anyone else breathe. So first thing, you got to fight that inner man in you. And I know it's hard. It's hard to do. That inner man is the naysayer that is stopping you from taking care of yourself. The, The naysayer that's saying, oh, that's being selfish. But taking care of things you need is not selfish. Taking care of things that you desire is not selfish. Taking care of things that you dream about is not selfish. It's not. And so I know there's a battle going on in your inner man. It's a fight. It is a fight. Because you are fighting um, something that was, you know, ingrained in in the fabric of who you are as a woman. But you must remember that God wants you to be healthy. And being healthy means being centered. It means being in balance. And you are not in balance when you're always giving out and you're not giving back to yourself. And so the fight is all about staying balanced in your life. You can't give so much of yourself that you don't have anything to give for you. You have to learn how to fight in your mindset in a way to believe that God wants balance in your life. Balance that can meet the needs of others. Balance that also can meet your needs. And so when one is off, you got to check to see who's wearing the oxygen mask because it might not be you. And oftentimes that balancing act you know, it's strongly connected to you setting boundaries. You know, I had to share this with someone this week. Boundaries are so important, you know, um, and this is something that must be practiced. You have to practice setting up those boundaries for others because when you uh, when you set up boundaries for others, then people will understand how to respond to you. 
instead of waiting to be reactive to situations. They already know because you set them up. And when boundaries are set, you have protected yourself, right? You've protected yourself in a way that you don't have to fight. But this can also, but in this, I would say, it also can bring around some insecurity of what people may say, you know, because that's something that we do, especially women. We're always concerned about what others think, you know, what they think about us, what they're saying about us, you know. But who the sun sets free is free indeed. And being residue free is all about living in a way that you are free from what other people say and what other people think and what decisions you make to protect yourself. So tell yourself today, I am free from what others say about me. Say it again. I am free from what others say about me. I'm free. Amen. Second, you must deal with that inner voice. Remember I said there's always two voices battling each other, right? But there's an inner voice spreading false narratives about you living selfish, about you being selfish, which is so far from the truth. Because taking care of yourself is not selfish. So again, what voice are you listening to today? What voice is the loudest today? Is the voice agreeing with what they are telling you? Or is the voice trying to tell you that you matter, that your life matters, that you are important, that you need to be balanced, you need to be centered, right? And so if you're unsure, I always say, tell, tell someone who's not your friend, the situation and what's going on. Get to an unbiased opinion about what's going on and they'll tell you who you listen to. That They'll know because you got to know who you listen to. And then lastly, you got to realize that God didn't bring you this far so that the enemy could win. <laughs> he didn't bring you this far. You're not alive today. If you're watching this and you're hearing me today, and you didn't succumb to COVID. There's a reason God brought you this far. And stop, so stop putting off or delaying living your best days now. God wants you to live your best days now. Stop putting off your life like it's golden. Stop putting off uh, as if heaven is, isn't already here because heaven is already here. God did not preserve your life for advancement to live a life in bondage. Right, He didn't. He preserved your life to live it for the now, not for tomorrow, but for the now. Say that he preserved my life to live for the now. See, Jesus came to set the captives free and God wants you to live free. He wants you to live residue free. He wants you to live an abundant life. He wants you to live thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You cannot live your best life when you keep putting the oxygen mask on someone else first. And so it's time. You need to fight that inner man and tell her to her face. <laughs> tell her to her face, right? That your body, your mind, and your spirit will be in balance by setting up boundaries, by challenging those false assumptions, and those false narratives that you will put the oxygen mask on first, that you will preserve for a purpose. God has a purpose for your life, Linus Queen, which is why you are still alive today. God wants you to take care of yourself. He doesn't want, if you don't take care of yourself, who will? You got to put the oxygen mask on you first. You matter. Your life matters. So start walking in it. If you don't if you do not do it right now, you're not going to make it. Because you, as a woman, there's so many roles that we have. So many positions we have. But God needs you to put the oxygen mask on first. You got to believe that today. Believe that the promises of God are yea and amen. God has called you to do some things. God has called you to some places. You are going to be a mover and a shaker. This is your time. This is your season. Let your light so shine for the world to see. Don't let the enemy dim your light because guess what? 
you got to put the oxygen mask on first because you matter and your life matters. Amen and amen.